Okay guys, so in this final part of the Garusa elimination, we are just going to talk, or actually to show, we already talked about the pivoting, but we are going to show how to do the pivoting. So I'm going to uncomment the pivoting part. Right, so you see it's not complex, it's just a few lines of code. Right. So what we're going to do is that first of all we extract the value at the current index we are processing. Basically it's the value of the diagonal, right? Which are called pivot. And then we're going to check if the pivot is zero. So usually when you work with floating point numbers Checking against zero exactly is not a good idea, right? Like checking like that is, is not good because due to floating point precision, you might not get the result you want. So usually it's good to take the absolute value and check against an epsilon value, right? So which is a really small value, it's like 10 to the minus 10, right? So it's really small, that's what I'm checking against. So if that's the case, it means that it's pretty much zero or it is zero. We don't want to divide by that. So we start the research of another index, right? And this index will be uh, any of the available r value in the same column below the diagonal, right? So let's say we are here and we need to swap. We're going to check those values. They are the one below the diagonal. If you are here, the only value we can check is this one. If you are in the last one, well, you actually don't need to divide, so you're good to go. So, what, that's what we're going to do. So again, we loop j plus one for the number of rows. Again, that's how we loop for the low below the diagonal. We grab the number, we extract the absolute value, again, and we check if it's uh, greater than epsilon. If it is, okay, fine. We are going to use that. So it's not zero, so we're going to use this value. Uh, so we set the index, the value we found, and then we get out of the loop. We check if no value was set, so we didn't find any index, okay, we're going to return an error. This is not an error, just a print and return. Say, okay, I don't know what to do. I cannot pivot. We don't know what to do. The technique we're using is called partial pivoting because the full pivoting also allows you to swap around columns, right? I, I kept this simple and I did a partial pivoting with rows, which is easier. And then we're just going to swap the rows. Swap rows is a simple utility function we probably saw earlier. So let's find it. This is swap. Here we go. Swap row. So we pass the two indices we want to swap. We use our utility function set row and get row. Get row we extract the rows and then set row we set back in. Right? Highly inefficient. Really highly inefficient. But it's easier to understand what's going on. Right? So let's go back up. So once we swap the row, we need to swap the value in the solution vector. So. We store the that's how usually you do a swap. You save the value into a copy, then you override one value, then you save the other value, right? So this is just swapping the value into the solution vector for the indices we found. And that's it. Uh, that's how pivoting works, partial pivoting works. And we are done with our uh, discussion on how to write the, the Gaussian solver to solve a linear system. Again, highly inefficient, I valued more clarity over performance in this case, otherwise I wouldn't be using Python, right? All right, guys, so uh, that's it for this video. In the last video, final video, we're going to use an example how to, basically, how to use that to interpolate a polynomial along any number of points. All right, so see you in the next video.